Welcome back to the sequel challenge. Upon reviewing the poll, several people forgot to read the instructions and voted for other without giving any suggestions. Hmm. Anyways, the winner appears to be the Elemental Challenge. Fire, Earth, Lightning, uh, still not sure about the Protoss element, but we'll get there when we get there. Since quite a few people also voted for the Zookeeper Challenge, I'll do that in the future as well. Anyways, the rules are quite simple. Only use units from StarCraft II. Variations of original units are not allowed. For example, the Sentinel or the Ascendant. Original abilities on new units are not allowed. Only use heroes from StarCraft II. New abilities on old heroes are allowed. Only use passive Spear of Adun abilities. The only exception to rules 1-3 to three is if a unit or structure needs to be used to complete a mission. If an objective requires me to rescue an old unit, I must always kill them. Since photon cannons and shield batteries were in the original games, I also won't use them. The run will be done on hard difficulty. Zeratul arrives at a Mobius station to help rescue Protoss prisoners. Kerrigan's there too, hunting down the hybrid labs following her victory over Minsk. Stay out of our way, Zeratul. Now Kerrigan could just wait until Zeratul frees his allies, or better yet, work with him to clear the station, but that requires common sense. I mass stalkers, immortals, colossi, and sentries, and push in between the Zerg offensives. While the Mobius defenders are entrenched, my sentries help keep my army alive by healing their shields. But Pi, isn't that just like the shield battery that was in the original games? What? No, no, no. Shield batteries used recharge. The sentry's ability is called Shield Restore. Now that sounds pretty unoriginal to me. Petar, we wish to join you to avenge our brothers in arms. Oh, you can join us in death. After some cleaning, I gather my army and smash through the final defenses, opening the final cell. Sadly, the mission sabotages me by making the prisoners invincible, meaning I'm unable to finish them off as per rule number five. Any who defies my order will answer to their High Lord with blood. Clash seems like a cool guy. I sure hope we see more of him. Anyways, I need to fight my way through Taltarim lines. Due to the lack of Vespine, I sent a band of Stalkers and Void Rays to attack the nearby vents. Stalkers lure the enemy in, and my Void Rays finish them off. As for defense, due to my lack of photon cannons, I make a wall of warp gates, allowing my stalkers to maneuver around it whenever sell its attack. Eventually, I build up a fleet of void rays to burn a path to the temple, ending the mission. I do need to bring Zeratul to the end of the map and back, but in the spirit of the run, I only use his blink and void armor while keeping him out of combat. Using my force of stalkers, I repeatedly harass the enemy patrols, drawing them away from their defenses and finishing off the remainder. The vile Zeratul repeatedly tries to sabotage me by getting a kill or two in, forcing a reset, but I manage to get to the void catalyst and destroy it, and then I have to escape. As much as I hate him right now, I do need to get Zeratul out of the temple. Sacrificing my stalkers, I run him out of there while Talus stays behind, ending the mission. Artanis is getting ready to reclaim Ire, but Zeratul spews some nonsense about evil Zelnaga or whatever. Sadly, every second I spend listening to Zeratul is another second not spent blasting my enemies, so I skip the cutscene. It's time to retake Ire. I'm left with a problem. Zealots were in the original games, but they're the type of unit who'd love to die in battle, so I send them off to retirement. With a handful of stalkers and immortals, I lure the Zerg back to the mothership, weakening their defenses and allowing me to blast through the initial spines. Ever the pal, Selendis sends me useful colossi, which assist in my harassment tactics. I also need to destroy several hatcheries throughout the city. After destroying the fourth hatchery, I decide to see how my zealots are doing in retirement. Wait, what's that noise? Oh my god.
was I doing again? Oh, right, the challenge. I send my force up the hill where several hybrid reveal themselves, but I finish them off and clear the last conduit, ending the mission. Zeratul tries leaving, but finds the Void Seeker destroyed. Rest in peace, Seeker, you will be dearly missed. I get access to a base and am introduced to Karax, a completely worthless Solarite addict who can't invent or it. Anyways, I have to fight my way to Artanis' base deeper in the city. The only unit I get access to is the Stalker. In fact, from growing Shadow until Brothers in Arms, this is going to be a mostly Stalker-only run. You know the drill, lure portions of the enemy out of their base, pick them off, blink to protect my Stalkers, the usual. I reach the enemy base, but it turns out Amon has corrupted the Kala and taken over most of the Protoss. Using my expert tactic of running away from my problems, I reach Artanis without much incident. Amon, using Artanis' blades, kills Zeratul, but not before he frees the young hero. You remember Artanis. You did not whether to simp or not to simp, but who one seems for? Spear of Adun is a mission about the Spear of Adun. I need to clear four power cells of creep, enabling me to reactivate the ship and escape ire. With the Kala corrupted, I not only have to fight Zerg, but also Protoss throughout the level. Unfortunately, Karax tries to sabotage me by suggesting I use useless photon cannons and shield batteries. He also has the gall to suggest summoning pylons. But Pi, summon pylon wasn't in the original games. But it's a complete insult to this challenge. Why would I want to use an ability that summons an original structure? Disgusting! To defend my base, I use warp gates to create choke points, allowing me to funnel enemy attacks into my stalkers. For offense, you know the drill, lure, kite, finish off the remainder. With the way to each power cell clear, I hit all four cells simultaneously and end the mission. I have the choice to go to Core Hall or Shakuras. I choose Shakuras since Brainer's at Core Hall, and in StarCraft 2, original characters are always a pain to deal with. I get access to the War Council, which allows me to use different units based on the factions I pick. For instance, the Stalker gets the useful ability to heal its shields every time I teleport them. Amon's Reach requires me to clear four launch bays of creep. Unfortunately, Vorazun tries to sabotage me by giving me useless Dark Templar. I clear them out and rush Stalkers to deal with the first Void Thrasher. Engaging in more feigned retreats, I lure out defenders and overwhelm their static defense. Eventually, I clear the last launch bay, and the mission ends. Last Stand is a mission about last stands. I need to hold the Zilnaga Temple for 25 minutes against relentless Zerg attacks. To add insult to injury, Karax gives me useless Kaderan monoliths. But Pi, Kaderan monoliths weren't in the original games. But they're expensive, fire slowly, and the AI keeps prioritizing them. Nevertheless, stalkers only on last stand should be doable. After all, Grant did it, right? Giant Grant Games, I need your wisdom. That was in the original games. I knew I shouldn't have asked Grant. Despite my best efforts, I repeatedly get overrun 30 seconds before the timer is up. To add insult to injury, Karax has the gall to tell me there's Solarite he could have gotten earlier, just as my defenses are being breached. Since I can't do a stalker-only strat without shield batteries, it's time to backtrack. I hate seeing Raynor's original face, but there's no other way to beat Last Stand. Thankfully, the skip button lets me completely avoid having to lay eyes upon him. I start Sky Shield with useless Zealots. Rushing out Stalkers, I clear each Stabilizer, doing my best to practice my Blink Micro. Raynor, useless as ever, doesn't bother sending troops to help retake the platform. Leave it to a human to screw things up, am I right? Nevertheless, I clear the stabilizers and stop the platform's descent. Must remind you, our sacred law, the Deu, clearly forbids us to interfere with lesser beings. Unless there is a direct threat to the Empire. Your choice to aid these Terrans is perplexing. Why do you assume that they are lesser beings, Rohana? I do not make an assumption. Gaze upon me. Can I get a Unsophisticated. Wall? Can I please get they a one more? No. No, no. He's got a point. I get access to useful immortals again. Raynor, useless as ever, falls asleep every few minutes, forcing me to protect him. 
After massing a force of immortals and stalkers, I'm able to blast through the hybrid attacks with ease. Eventually, Raynor pulls his act together and helps retake the Keystone. Please relay my appreciation to Commander Raynor. Hey, you got it, Skippy. Skippy? No, Swan. You always know what to say. I head to Glacius, where... It is the site of the Purifier Revival Program. The Forbidden Weapon? The Purifier Revival. I start with a pathetically small army. Thankfully, I'm given useful... These centuries were left behind. Let me activate them. They are quite effective at restoring shields to nearby warriors. Well, maybe if you gave me more starting units, I wouldn't need healers, now would I? And there. Our gateways are now calibrated to warp them in as well. Can you calibrate them to warp in your competence? Anyways, I build up a force of Stalkers, Sentries, and Annihilators, which... Wait, why are these Nerezim again? Like, Dark Templar are supposed to be Space Ninjas, and Annihilators are more like... Anyways, I push with half my army while building up a defensive force at home. Every time I repel an attack, I send the troops to reinforce my offensive. Eventually, I smash through the remaining Tontarim and reach the vault. I wonder what new character they'll introduce. Artanus, it is good to see you, young executor. Nope, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> okay, now I can actually win this mission. Annihilators mow down hybrid and ultras, while sentries heal and stalkers deal with everything else. Because Karax decided not to tell me about the Solarite until literally the last minute, I blow the temple early, just to spite him. Karax tries to sabotage me again by telling Artanis to go to the Altarian Rift, which is between universes and would theoretically shred everyone aboard into nothing. Like most of his work, his plan falls flat on its face as the Spear of Adun is evidently not concerned with silly things like physics. Temple of Unification is a mission about unifying a temple. I need to secure five locks to open the entrance into Ulnar. Once again, Karax tries to sabotage me by sending in useless scouts, but presses the Phoenix button by accident. They're capable of lifting enemies off the ground and firing while moving, which makes them the ideal unit for moving around the map to secure the locks. Unfortunately, without static defense, holding the locks is fairly impractical. But you know what is practical? War. After wiping out my foes, I waltz around the map and open the entrance into Ulnar. Kerrigan shows up and Artanis tries to kill her, but because this is the sequel challenge, killing her sequel characters isn't part of the rules. Artanis, stop saying- Be silent, Tassadar. Anyway, since both Kerrigan and Artanis were in the original games, I try to push using only Spawn Banely, which very quickly devolves into a game of- Why are you running? Why are you running? So I play normally, tank with Artanis, deal damage with Kerrigan, and go to the shrines. Meanwhile, Alarak. Your leader is in grave danger. You think us fools? Yes, but that is irrelevant. Am I to believe that the moment you're released, your blade will not be in my back? You waste time. Make your decision. You will take us to Artanis. Most wise. I need to reach Artanis. Karax and Vorazun try to sabotage me by sending in useless High Templar. To counter this, I choose Sentinel Zealots, which can resurrect after death and merge my High Templar into Archons, running them through Mobius forces to reach Artanis and Kerrigan without any kills. For some reason, this lone marauder ends up surviving the cutscene, forcing me to lure it into Zerg lines. For early defense, I draw the enemy into the Zerg rather than fight them alone. In classic sequel fashion, Kerrigan keeps demanding I help her do things, even though she clearly has enough troops to finish this herself. Building up a force of stalkers, sentries, and annihilators, I attack each crystal whenever Kerrigan moves out and destroy them, ending the mission. I had to Slane to help out my boy Alarak with installing himself as head of an expansionist theocratic dictatorship. You know, typical Earth stuff. You know what time it is. More drugs. Karax tries to sabotage me by sending in useless arbiters, but he presses the void ray button by accident. They're useful for burning out armored targets, allowing me to focus down larger enemies like battlecruisers and carriers. 
After amassing a force of stalkers, sentries, and void rays, I burn a path to each of the guardians and end the mission. It's at this point Alarak reveals we didn't actually need to do this. The Templar are not a weapon you can wield as you wish. Deceive me again, and this alliance of ours comes to an end. Slaying Malash's guardians fulfilled more than one purpose. Once the High Lord lies dead at my feet, none will challenge my rule. Do not assume you are already victorious, Alarak. Do not let the Terrazine cloud your judgment. The battle is already won. In my mind's eye, I have delivered the killing blow in a thousand ways. From my experience, overconfidence is your opponent's greatest ally. Spoken as one who welcomes defeat. It's time to kill Malash. I need to help Alarak push the High Lord to the other end of the map. To do this, I build up a force of Void Rays to burn out anything that comes near Alarak. The vile Karax tries to sabotage me by suggesting I divert units away from the duel to get some solar ray poop. I just split my army in half and eliminate them. Afterwards, I gather my entire fleet together and cut a path straight to the pit. Our master has already won Alarak. We will lead our people to their doom. You are right about one thing, Malash. I will lead them. Alarak kills Malash, and the mission ends. I head to Endion to get Colossi. Unimaginable heresy. While I hate the idea of helping Phoenix, the only other option is Revenscar, where I have to play as Karax. So off to Endion I go. Before awakening the purifiers, I need to shut down the stasis fields surrounding their station. To do this, I must escort a megalith to five locks around the map. Yet again, Karax tries to sabotage me by sending in useless reavers, but he presses the Colossi button by accident. With long-range lasers and the ability to scale cliffs, they're perfect for this mission. Better luck next time, Karax. Eat shit and die, Ricky! Eat shit and live. Using the Megalith to tank against the Zerg, I mass a force of Colossi, Sentries, Stalkers, and Annihilators to burn through the Hive Clusters. After getting the Megalith to all five locks, the mission ends. It's time to awaken the Purifiers. I need to destroy 12 Null Circuits around the map while also defending the station's core matrix from attack. Phoenix tries to sabotage me by suggesting that I use Photon Cannons to defend the Matrix, but I clear them out and repeat my plan of pushing with half my army while defending with a reserve force. Using a mix of Stalkers, Annihilators, Sentries, and Colossi, I destroy all 12 Null Circuits and the Purifiers destroy Endion, ending the mission. It's time for the dreaded Karax mission. As the Spear of Adun approaches Mobius Corps' base, the Terrans launch an ambush, forcing Artanis to send Karax into battle. Templar's Charge is a mission about Templar's charging. Karax tries to sabotage me by giving me useless carriers, but I destroy them quickly. I then mass a force of destroyers and mirages. Mirages lift up ground units and draw enemy fire while destroyers deal damage. Despite repeated counterattacks by the Mobius Corps, I destroy each power core ending the mission. Oh, also Karax gets a promotion for some reason, even though I did all the work. <laughs> it's time to return to Ire. To free the Templar, I need to destroy Avon's host form and cast him out of the Kala with the Keystone. Technically, we don't need to rescue our people, if there are no people. No, not doing that. Oh, come on, Artanis. It's the sequel challenge. Blowing up planets is what Protoss do. No. Oh, you original characters always choose the boring route. Templar's Return is a mission about Templars returning. To delay Amon from calling in reinforcements, I need to blow up three crystals powering Ayer's warp network. I start with Vorazun and Alarak, allowing me to slash through Zerg lines. Tell me, how did you lose Ayer to these animals? The Zerg were once the greatest threat my people faced. Only a fool would underestimate them. Well then, I will bow to your experience as the fool. The duo destroy the first crystal, and I move on to the second area. I put Phoenix in timeout and try to fight with Karax, but he's useless as usual. 
I have to play normally. In the spirit of the run, I don't use phase cannon since it calls down a photon cannon, and I make sure to kill the reavers nearby. With the force of immortals, sentries, and colossi, I fight my way through the second crystal. The third segment also isn't doable since I need to use Artanis and there's too many Zerk to fight with just sequel units. Nevertheless, I succeed, and the mission ends. It's time to destroy Amon's host. I need to destroy five void shards around the map, which will enable my fleet to fire on the host form directly. To do this, I devise a careful strategy involving a diverse army with complex maneuvering to win. All vessels, ready your weapons, now! Ire will be reclaimed. You require my skills. I return to serve. Ancient glory reborn. I am eager to strike. Let us begin. Phase crystals charged. Direct my vengeance. Justice has come. Templar, unleash your fury! It's time to save the Templar. I need to hold until the Keystone is fully charged. Meanwhile, waves of Zerg and Protoss repeatedly attack my base. To aid my allies, I devise a careful strategy involving a diverse army with complex maneuvering to win. Victory is nearly upon us. Do not lose hope. Be silent, Face Smith. Selendus and Amon find Artanis in the temple. He's still fighting, but vulnerable. But something's wrong. Selendus can't pull the. Hold on. I feel like we've been here before. You are familiar with the Terran term déjà vu, borrowed from the Indo-European Romance language, French. Naturally. It means already seen, and ascribes the feeling that one has experienced their current situation before. However, when and where they experienced it remains unclear. Perhaps it was another life. Or another timeline. One where the rules were different, where old beat new. Oh. But there's no way of verifying if this is déjà vu or déjà vu, a false feeling of familiarity. And if this is a new timeline with new rules, there's no way to accurately predict future events based on a familiar feeling. I know, I'm just stalling. The Keystone sends Amon out of the Kala, and the Templar sever their connection, forcing him back to the Void. Enter the Void starts me with useless sentinels, but a decent force of stalkers and annihilators. After clearing the landing zone, the vile Tassadar asks us to rescue him from Narud, who's also here for some reason. Anyways, I mass a force of stalkers, annihilators, and colossi, push through enemy lines, and help my allies gain a foothold in the area. Stukov kills Narud, and the mission ends. Tassadar, you told Zeratul about Kerrigan in the first place. If you didn't want us to simp for Kerrigan, why did you say she was the messiah? It was the truth that would save our brethren, but deep down, I couldn't accept it. I wanted you to fail. I hate the sequels. I hate their story. I miss when Starcraft wasn't about magic rocks and spice gods. Those days are gone, and they're never coming back. All I can do now is as I have always done, act for the good of creation. You cannot meet Amon alone, Kerrigan. As a primal Zerg, you are no longer an original character. But I am. Merge with me, Kerrigan. Complete the cycle that was meant to be. Old and new. Purity of form, purity of essence. Together we will become Zelnaga and strike down the Dark God. Once and for all. And I've already failed the mission. I have to use Kerrigan to kill these Void Thrashers. Afterwards, I try not to use her for the rest of the mission. Due to the early attacks, I'm unable to expand and have to rush out a planetary fortress. I was looking forward to using Perdition Turrets, but evidently planetaries will have to do. I also mass Marauders and Metapacks, using them to drop reinforcements to protect my allies' bases. While Zagara's base is able to put up a good fight, 
Artanis' base is hot garbage and falls pretty early without support. To fortify my northern flank, I build a second planetary while also adding reapers and duskwings to my arsenal. You raid a monster who has murdered scores of your people. No, no. He's got a point. Unfortunately, the attacks in the south are so massive that my allies get overrun even with my assistance. The furthest I can get is 71%, which is pretty impressive considering how behind my economy and defenses are. Ultimately, I'm forced to use Kerrigan to soften the enemy attacks, though this allows me to expand and properly fortify my positions. Despite the northern side being overrun, time runs out and the mission ends. It's time to beat Amon. I make a force of aberrations and swarm queens. Corpsers and swarm queens. Impaler. I give up. It's been two hours. I'm using Zelnaga Kerrigan. After waiting forever for Void Crystals to pop up, Raynor's army somehow manages to kill the last two, and the mission ends. It's time to kill Amon. But something's wrong. Kerrigan can't pull the trigger. I can. Here comes the Gantrithal. like old times already. Old times. You have your own Shut up, Arcturus. Oh, hell. So can you beat StarCraft II using only StarCraft II units? Nope. Despite my best efforts, the third prologue mission, the second Ulnar mission, the first return to Ire mission, and the last two epilogue missions all require me to use original heroes in one form or another. Impressively though, Legacy of the Void is probably the most successful run so far at 20 out of 25 missions, being doable with sequel units, not counting workers of course. If I include Evil Awoken, where I never used Zeratul for combat and only spammed Void Armor for healing, this brings it up to 21 out of 25, 84%. If I include Amon's Fall, where Zelnaga Kerrigan could be classified as a new unit since she's all orangey, this brings it up to 22 out of 25 missions, 88%. A sequel Protoss arsenal suffers from a lack of splash damage early on, a lack of static defense, as well as being very gas heavy. As per your requests, I'll be finishing off this run with Nova Covert Ops, and based on the poll, it looks like I'll be doing the Elemental Challenge next. More on that in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and steal Karax's Solarite. Until next time, see ya.